Hello chess friends and welcome to Zadov Chess Channel and welcome back to our Queen's Game Decline series. So in this series we're following this very nice opening from White's and from Black's perspective and today we're continuing with our Queen's Game Decline studies and the so-called Vienna Variation. The Vienna Variation we have started recently. First we had this intro video in which I've uh, showed you uh, the most important traps and tactical motifs that you can face for white and for black uh, in the Vienna variation and today we're analyzing now the Vienna variation from black's perspective because in my opinion it's a solid opening it's I think an opening that they give you uh, equal position in the early stage of the game and that's exactly what you're searching uh, when you search maybe for an opening as black you're searching for equality in an early stage of the game so you cannot just uh, rush into attack so you have to play a solid game you have to know what's going on over the board what are your strategical and tactical goals of this opening so i think the vienna variation is perfectly fine so as i said we're starting now the first um, line of the vienna variation it will be the passive e3 line we will also analyze in the future the more aggressive e4 line but uh, let's uh, stuck to this particular line because it's sort of a line that uh, can give you uh, some some nightmares if you don't know what you're doing if you ha don't know what are the strategical and tactical goals you can get get, uh, get smashed very very easily in an early stage of the game so that's why it's i think very important to know this particular line so as i said let's check out now the vienna variation and this passive e3 line by white so we have first of all of course d4 d5 and then the queen's gambit with the move c4 then we play of course e6 queen's gambit declined knight to c3 and after knight to f6 uh, knight to f3 we would reach then the uh, three knights variation of the queen's game the client and now comes the actual vienna variation move with the move d takes c4 again i'm pointing out this d takes c4 is not so bad like in the common maybe queen's gambit accepted lines i would not recommend you maybe to play the queen's gambit accepted because the common queen's gambit accepted would be something like this after uh, c4 then you would play d takes c4 then knight to f3 and then after maybe e6 e3 knight to f6 bishop to c4 we can notice as i also um uh, showed you in my previous video that the knight is not on c3 and it's a huge huge difference so the vienna variation it is similar to the queen's gambit accepted but it's not the same because of the huge difference uh, that the knight is on c3 here by white and that's exactly what we want to get in the vienna variation because here when the knight is there and after e3 bishop to c4 uh, you see both of the pieces so the bishop on c4 and the knight on c3 are becoming more and more some object of the queen side attack here by black so that's why as i said it's a huge difference uh to play maybe the queen's gambit accepted or maybe to play the uh, the vienna variation of the queen's gambit declined it's not the same don't mix it up because the strategies are a little bit different although there are some patterns that you can recognize uh for both of these openings but as i said don't mix it up because it's simply not the same so after move d takes c4 the knight on c3 becomes as i said our tactical goal and also the bishop when uh the pawn is taken on c4 a6 b5 then b4 maybe c5 uh to simply break uh the position on the queen side that's the actual goal and as i said it gives you an immediate equality this opening so it's not something uh, that's bad it's not something that gives i think here white already such a beautiful game you have chances here from black's perspective and i wanted to show really some beautiful approaches that you can use in order to play the vienna variation correctly so we have now the move e3 and now comes the actual move a6 a6 is as i said dull preparation after bishop to c4 to play then uh, simply the move b5 and what white can always do it's prevent this idea with the move a4 it is playable it's a very popular line by white but it gives now several uh, problems also in white's position after move a4 we can notice now that there are clear targets in the position uh, we have now first of all the weak b4 square that can be always occupied and uh, the most important thing about the b4 square is when you maybe cement something around one square uh, we can always call it that it's a weak square because um, it cannot be kicked away by the pawn anymore so when we occupy something around the square b4 when we fix something around the square b4 then i think um, black has a comfortable game on, on that side of the board so after move a4 you could go into this line now we would reach more and more um this queen's gambit accepted lines that i should 
uh, that I would always, I think, uh, um, recommend you to avoid it because uh, the Queen's Gambit accepted has, I think, some tricky ideas for White, and White has sort of a, a game that gives, I think, him a pleasant game in the middle game stage. Here, you could break and enter with the move c5, then probably the game would lead into something like bishop to c4, then after knight to c6, castling, c takes d4, e takes d4, and one of the strategical goals I think are accomplished here because after e takes d4, we can notice now that white is here the idolated d pawn, and most of the times when you face uh, the idolated pawn, uh, you should play simply a blockade idea around the pawn, so that's why uh, here knight to b4 with ideas to play knight to d5 here occupying simply the d5 square cementing and fixing your position uh, around the square d5 like a hedgehog you know just keep the grip around the square d5 is perfectly fine you have a good setup but i think this position doesn't give you uh, so many so many attacking opportunities uh, i've played many times this position and i had some drawish games i had some losing game i had some winning games but i have to tell you i really didn't feel well when i played the game i thought always this line is a little bit too passive if this is a solid line you have some chances bishop to e7 maybe is put uh, here the continuation castling uh, queen to e2 knight to d5 semantic the position but in, in this scenario white can go always into this line knight to d5 knight to d5 maybe something like bishop to d5 you could go bishop takes g5 but now after bishop to e4 where is this bishop going and uh, that was always something that bothered me in the continuation of the game i have the bishop here uh, but i don't like my bishop so much uh, first of all this bishop has to be now uh has to retreat now to f6 and now the bishop on um, c8 maybe has some opportunities to get in the game to d7 but still you have to cover that with uh, with the move uh, rook to b1 uh, rook to b8 and similar stuff so rook to c1 is going to happen maybe you will lose the battle on the c file so as i said this wasn't the position that i wanted to reach so i wanted to show you now a more flexible um, approach that i saw really in a beautiful game that was played by wesley so against magnus carlson here we have again uh queen's game declined after move e6 knight to c3 and now we have again the vienna variation move d takes c4 again e3 a6 perfectly fine a4 and now we play b6 i think this move b6 instead of this uh, idea immediately to break with the move c5 is much much better because we should delay uh, the move uh, c5 as i said also in the game played by kasparov and the vladimir kramnik that was our second uh video of of this uh, opening that we're starting now we should simply battle now for the e4 square it's very very important to battle for this square because when we battle for the e4 square it causes now a bad bishop strategy that we can apply against this bad bishop on c1 so we we're not allowing that's i think the beauty of this line we're not allowing this bishop to get into the game when e4 happens then this should be pretty much possible i think uh, if e4 then bishop to f4 bishop to g5 it's going to happen uh with the move bishop to c4 and then if e4 as we said bishop to g5 if white gets these two connected pawns on d4 e4 this knight centralized on f3 and c3 the bishop on c4 the bishop on g5 this would be a monstrous uh, setup that you have to face. But now with the move b6, instead of the move c5 that we have seen, I think you could have really, really a more flexible game. So that's why here you see now the problems of white in this position. As we said, we're playing now a simple bad bishop strategy here against this bishop on c1. Look how Vesel so did, did this very, very well. So here, bishop to c4, bishop to b7, battling for uh, the e4 square. Very important move. Now white has to prepare this move further he's playing now after casting we play bishop to b4 like in the nimzo indian it's not the same but similar in the nimzo indian we're getting rid of every defender now of the e4 square you see the bishop is attacking the knight on c3 but the knight is controlling also the e4 square so this is now i think a much much better and more flexible way to play uh, the vienna variation here we have queen to e2 again put in e4 but now we simply castle and now comes rook to the uh, rook to d1 of course this is a, an aggressive method uh, what uh, uh, what the white is hoping for if something gets cleared of course then uh, the d file attack by the rook against the queen could be very very dangerous but 
we play simply queen to e7 we play normal move we don't weaken with this move anything uh we still keep flexible still as we said c5 what i don't like this with this early c5 move is that the fact that we can play c5 whenever we want to play but i think it was much much more important to battle first for your opponent's e4 square and then afterwards we will uh, uh find our goal we will play the move c5 eventually but not immediately it's i think a huge huge difference that you should apply a little bit different mover is very important to recognize in in this opening and i think from this point on we have a decent game so here in the continuation we have now bishop to d3 so here magnus carlton played with the white pieces vest is so here with the black pieces you see magnus is desperately trying to play the move e4 to liberate the uh, the dark square bishop maybe somewhere to uh, g5 f4 and similar stuff but now c5 as we said there is always a good way to break this position in the center with the move c5 but uh, it's simply uh, not uh, time in the beginning to do that now it was perfectly fine to play this move so we have now knight to a2 and that's the actual maybe uh, sort of line maybe that bothers many players because in some occasions maybe this bishop on b4 could be endangered you don't want to give up maybe your bishop pair in an early stage of the game so the two things that you can make is the, uh, first of all the move bishop to a5 but also normal development with move knight to c6 here in the game uh magnus took knight to b4 we have knight to b4 also by vessel so and okay white is the bishop pair but I really love now black's position because the knight is very active on b4. Knight is controlling still the e4 square. Uh, bishop on b7 very very active. Rook will come now on d8 and this other rook will come on c8. So this perfect setup you see now we have uh, finished all of our three stages of the opening. I mentioned it many times in our videos. Um, the three stages of the opening are uh, developing minor pieces, securing the king by casting and connecting rooks by maneuvering the queen from the uh, the first or from black perspective of course from the eighth rank and we have finished everything look at this setup maybe it's not something that wins the game immediately but that's not the point when you play with the black pieces we should find an equality quality equality that's uh what you can hope for while playing with the back black pieces so we have now b3 by magnus uh, magnus desperately will try to develop somewhere the dark Lord bishop but this bishop bad bishop strategy really really works here perfectly fine we have now knight takes d3 after rook to d3 bishop to e4 attacking the rook rook to d1 rook to uh, c8 here by uh Vestless so we have uh, bishop to a3 attacking the c5 and now a beautiful counter attack by vesley so uh queen to b7 here after a couple of trades uh this was also target here the, the c5 uh, weakness but now vesley so took first that's now very important to say because when you uh, grab some pawns uh, it's very important that you grab the first pawn uh, then of course your opponent has to take now the pawn but now with 90d to look uh magnus carlson got challenged we had bishop to uh, d4 and now after a couple of trades of rooks uh here vastly so took this pawn and from this point on had a comfortable game vastly so won the game uh there were a couple of inaccuracies mistakes that were played in the continuation uh, it's not the point to analyze these games uh, from the value of the end game i think we can notice what happened in this game uh here vastly so played an active game gave up the bishop pair but had a beautiful beautiful uh, set up had a beautiful activity with this knight with the bishop on b7 and has now this beautiful pass pawn so let's go back let's go uh, to this uh, critical line so after move knight to c3 we play d takes c4 let's repeat again e3 we play a6 as we said if bishop to c4 happens immediately then we have b4 b5 b4 that will be now our analysis in the continuation of the video but uh, what white can play is now this Per, um, this idea to paralyze a little bit the queen side with the move a4 so not rush c5 is perfectly fine but it leads i think it into a very very solid game for white and i think you will have problems with the slight square bishop like you saw in the, in this first example in this example with the move b6 i think we're battling very with already for the very important e4 square which is much much more important now in the continuation bishop to b4 still a very active move you see it's an aggressive move queen to e2 we have kingside casting rook to d1 okay we got challenged queen to e7 uh sometimes in chess you have to just play maybe a slightly passive move with the queen but the queen is secure the queen is not uh bad here and here after move c5 
the position is uh, broken now in the center of course in the beginning of this um, opening white is always uh, this advantage this um, centralized pawns it's a two versus one so two pawns in the center of the board versus one pawn of blacks in the center of the board so with, when it comes to pawn central control uh, white is much much better but now with the c5 the pawn chain in the center is broken so uh, this is not uh, a long-term advantage that white will uh, have in the continuation of the game with the c5 uh, will break this position for sure so as i said knight to uh, a2 but now with knight to c6 okay he got your bishop but still with you see knight to d3 the bishop got channeled if you if uh, for instance black uh, uh pardon me white retreats here um uh, to to b1 still rook to c8 rook to d8 is of course the possibility and that's exactly uh, our other, um, other example it's now uh, vastly so with the white pieces against young krish of duda with the black pieces and basically uh, the cool part about this um, two games is that vastly played one game uh, in the same setup won the game against magnus carlson in this opening but now he lost the game against young krish of duda in the same opening again we had a4 b6 very very important this b6 is much much more flexible than c5 uh here we have bishop to c4 bishop to b7 and again this idea we have reached the similar position c5 now knight to a2 knight to c6 and here after knight to b4 here in this particular game uh vastly slow tried bishop to uh bishop to b1 but it's not a problem because bishop to e4 can control further the e4 square as we said we're battling for the square although uh here you don't have to play the game like this you can play of course rook from f to d8 because e4 is not an opportunity now immediately because you're leaving a little bit your d4 unprotected so that's why it's not so easy for white to uh, to push the spawns in the center uh, to make something out of this two versus one situation so i'm not going to show you now the whole game um uh, i wanted to show you this setup that you will get many many times in the vienna variation in this particular line i think it's a solid position it's a cornerstone position that you can reach it's a it's a position that uh can win many games for you uh, of course white has also some counter plays especially because of the fact that the bishop pair is there but stuck to the plan we have a bad bishop strategy that's mo the most important thing to recognize so we're playing against the bad bishop on c1 and we're battling for e4 square i think we can um, <coughs> memorize these two important strategic elements in order to have really a comfortable game so let's see now a different example what can happen for instance after d takes c4 e3 and we play now a6 and if our opponent plays now the move bishop to c4 so you see now uh now white is playing the game with the, without the move a4 now i think um uh, it's perfectly fine to continue with the normal move b5 b5 is in my opinion a beautiful aggressive move and here after move bishop to e2 or bishop to d3 again i'm pointing out don't play c5 immediately we have seen in this uh, previous example and please check out the game between kramnik and kasparov that we have covered uh, so far in the series okay kasparov played the move c5 and when it comes to computer evaluations um um again the engine will give equal chances for both sides but stuck to our plan our basic plans of this opening are a bad bishop strategy against the bishop on c1 we're not allowing this bishop to come into the game and the battle for the e4 square it's i think something that we can memorize very very easily without calculating i don't know what happens if that happens uh, and that's exactly how you should study openings when you study openings you have to understand uh, why you're playing uh, moves not uh, just um, uh, learn these uh, lines by heart that's not the point of the opening the point of the opening that you understand uh, what are your strategic elements and again in this particular uh, opening again battle for the e4 square and uh, battle against the bad bishop on c1 so it was a game played by predrag nikolic against the magnus carlson magnus carlson played here with the black pieces and the, he, you see now that he's not playing this move bishop to c uh, pardon me the move c5 immediately he's playing now bishop to be seven and battles immediately for the e4 square in my opinion it's much much better so here uh calcing we have a knight to uh knight to d7 and preparing c5 c5 
we will have always the opportunity to play c5. Don't rush into it. This move will come in one particular moment. It's not a problem. But now look at this bishop. The, this bishop on d6, c5, knight controlling, knight control c5. This is a good setup. Although it's not winning the game immediately because you played this particular uh, move order. But I think you have a really, really good game. So bishop to d2. Look this bad bishop on d2. Many times I had some problems when I played the game from white perspective in similar uh, structures i had so much problems uh so many problems you know, where to go with this uh, dark square bishop and now of course we can play bishop to d6 bishop to e7 is also perfectly fine but uh here magnus pulled off a more aggressive move bishop to d6 we had rook to c1 casting and now uh queen to e7 again as i said uh three stages of the opening we have uh um playing with the minor pieces uh, securing the king by casting and maneuvering the queen from the first or from the eighth rank when you play with black of course and then we have a rook connection this is now the setup that you can get i think it's a decent setup uh always remember what kind of a playing uh, what kind of opening did you play so far and what position did you get all of your openings i think many times if you put your openings that you have home prepared uh are giving maybe for opponent plus one evaluation here it's an equal uh evaluation for for both both sides even in this position black is slightly better so uh here after move queen to e7 we had knight to b one and now e5 we can even break this center with the move e5 we could have also played of course uh, the move c5 so we have bishop to uh, a5 now e takes d4 by magnus we have knight to d4 because here uh white didn't want to risk this isolated pawn um on the d file but also rook to e8 would be then very very dangerous so here in the continuation we had knight to d4 magnus uh immediately threatens checkmate on um, on h2 so that's why g3 c5 you see now we have a pawn majority attack three versus two uh here on the queen side and it's now already believe me or not a plus two evaluation for black really wild stuff and that's exactly what we want to get out of this opening because okay predag nikolic played here really a bad game he could have played different ideas but uh, it's also respected grandmaster and magnus carlson really really destroyed him here we have bishop to f3 uh bishop to f3 knight takes queen takes b2 this pawn is taken we have now e4 and now magnus after move rook to uh, e8 and uh, bishop to c3 found the beautiful move queen to a2 and it uh, seems so that we have sort of a fork here with the move uh, e5 but uh, magnus calculated this very very well he played now queen to d uh, queen to d5 first counter attacks this knight on f3 we have queen to um uh, d1 queen to d1 rook d1 and now this pawn can be taken in this position predrag nikolic resigned of course after a couple of trades maybe uh, we see that of course black is here three connected pass bones and it's something that you have to resign so really really beautiful game but as i said our main goal stays the same like in this a4 line that we have seen when a4 we still have played bishop to b7 uh, b7 and battle for e4 here also in this position let's go back so after d takes c4 e3 a6 bishop to c4 okay now our opponent didn't play the move uh, a4 so now of course b5 is an option a bishop to e2 bishop to b7 battling for e4 uh, and now knight to d7 uh, c5 uh, or bishop to d6 queen to e7 e5 so you have to break now a little bit this uh, uh, this pawn chain this small advantage that white is now in the center of the board and you have a comfortable game so let's see now another example again we have a similar position this position actually was reached out of the Janowski variation of uh, the queen's game declined it was a little bit different uh it was a game played by shakar mamajarov against magnus carlson but still um the same ideas happened because uh, here after move bishop to c4 again magnus pull off this move bishop uh, b5 again a bishop to e2 again i'm repeating you can play c5 but for the purpose of of uh, this opening i think uh, this bishop to b7 idea then followed with knight to d7 and c5 is much much better it gives you a better flexible game and you see now i move bishop to b2 that shaki mamajarov played it was again sort of a desperate try to de develop somewhere the dark square bishop and you see what you should not do is of course somehow allow this bishop to get somehow active into the game we have here bishop to e7 rook to c1 casting pretty normal stuff what magnus carlton is playing here queen to c2 rook to c8 getting the uh, rook where already the queen is 
queen to b1 now let's see shakir mamijarov is trying to get out of the c file attack sometimes in openings when you play chess openings it's uh, good to secure the queen although the queen is a little bit there it's not so active it's a little bit out of play sort of but uh, first of all it's good to have the queen out of play because the queen is not becoming an object of your opponent's attack and now when the queen uh maybe uh, gets further in the in the game afterwards okay when the position clears a little bit in the center then the queen is perfectly fine but okay the queen can be included because the queen is a long range piece so the queen will, the queen will always find um its way into the game so that's why after queen to b1 you see magnus also secures the queen on b6 now the queen are a little bit out of game but uh still with potential activities in the, in the later stage of the game so after move queen to b6 we have rook from f to d1 rook to d8 so you see solid setup magus competes now on both of these potential open files we have to always when we place the rooks uh, we have to know where uh, where uh, there will be maybe some open files it's obvious of course that the d file and the c file could get open so that's why uh, both of these top grandmasters uh Mamejaro and carson are basically battling uh for these two files so here we had h3 we had now uh h6 uh d takes c5 knight to c5 magnus has now a beautiful control of the center and it's actually even a, a slightly better uh position when it comes to computer revelations here for black so we have rook takes d8 rook takes d8 and now a slightly uh, here mistake by Shaq Mijaro because he allowed now the move b4 and the knight didn't have now good squares we had a rook takes d8 uh, queen to d8 knight to a4 and after knight to a4 we have b takes a4 magnus had now a comfortable game because he provoked some weaknesses we had knight loaded pawn on a4 on a2 and uh, magnus carlson won the game again uh, it's not the point that i wanted to show you uh, the whole games the basic setups are more, more important i think that we have to recognize so let's go back here after move bishop to c4 uh, as we said we play the move b5 then bishop to b7 knight to d7 now c5 uh, or like in this previous game bishop to d6 queen to e7 e5 c5 so it's i think a beautiful setup that you can get so the idea is clear we want to decoy uh, this bishop and the knight toward uh, the c4 square where this uh, the, this bishop can be attacked uh, by the pawn and we get some extra time extra tempi in this particular scenario we have seen let's go back uh after move a4 here uh that of course we can play then afterwards b6 then of course something like bishop to c4 bishop to b7 battling for e4 and then bishop to b4 with c5 knight to d7 again comfortable idea so here a4 is not the problem as i said although it paralyzes you a little bit but uh, still i think you can have very, very decent game so this was now our study of uh, the vienna variation after this lines with the move e3 uh, so it's i think a position that you reach many many times it is similar as i said to the queen's gambit accepted but not the same because the queen's gambit accepted can be played without the move knight to c3 which is, is a huge huge difference in the continuation the knight and c3 can be an object of black's attack uh, by the spawn majority on the queen side so that's why be careful also from white's perspective uh, this position that we have reached uh, from whites and from black's perspective uh, are not bad for white so you can use also these studies if you're playing against the vienna variation of the queen's game decline because these positions are not bad for any of uh, of these players but uh, you see uh, you have to be really tactical the, the tactical beast if you want to win some games you see magnus carlton wesley so young christoph duda these are really top grand masters and they have they have reached these positions many minutes of times they're losing their games in that uh, in this position they're winning their games in this position so as i said it's a playable opening for both sides so okay i hope that you enjoyed this study i think it's a very important line that we have to know in the vienna variation of the queen's game declined if you want to study this opening more please check out our series uh, from the beginning we had this intro video with the traps and tactical shots and we had also this beautiful gameplay by gary kasparov and this is now our third video of the series i hope uh, you study this opening very very hard and if you like this content uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel See you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course.